What's up my pre-calc people? In this video, we're going to discuss the solutions to the question number four from the 2025 AP Pre-Calculus Free Response Exam. All right, before we begin, don't forget that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. All right, let's dive into the question. So each part gave you several different equations and you had to kind of do something with. So part A gave you two functions, G and H, and we had to do a little bit of solving. We had to figure out where G of X equals four and where H of X equals three. So let's dive right into part one. All right, so we want to figure out where two log base three of X equals four. So go ahead and start writing that out. Now we have to show our work to solve this. Remember, we cannot use a calculator. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that two by dividing by two on both sides and four divided by two is two. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually use the definition of logs to write this as an exponential equation. So I get three raised to the second equals X and well, three raised to the second is nine. So I guess I'm done. X equals nine. Pretty easy question there. Overall, not too, too bad. Now there is another way you could do it. You could move the two up as an exponent first. So you get log base three of X squared equals four. That's pretty simple. Then what we could do is we could write that as three to the fourth equals X squared. Three to the fourth is 81 equals X squared. Then take a square root of each side and we get plus or minus nine equals X. We gotta be super careful to not write negative nine down as an answer because you cannot have a negative inside of a log. So X cannot be negative nine. And if you left that as an answer, there's a chance you might lose some points. But if you do it my way, the only answer you get is nine. All right, let's move on to part two, where we are asked to find where four cosine squared of X equals three. Now this one involves a little bit of trick, which for some students can be a little bit tricky, but overall not too bad. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and divide by four. So I get three fourths equals cosine squared of X. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take a square root of both sides. And when I take the square root of both sides, on the right-hand side, I just get cosine. On the left-hand side, I get plus or minus the square root of three fourths. Now, simplifying the square root of three fourths, I get the square root of three over two, pretty simple. And right away, I love the square root of three over two. I recognize that from my unit circle. Now, where does that occur on the unit circle? Well, hopefully we're thinking radical three over two is about 0.86. That could be right here on the x-axis or over here. So we're thinking this angle right here, this angle right here, this angle right here, or this angle right here. Sorry for that absolutely terrible drawing. But basically, we think about there being four solutions. Pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six. And technically, there's actually infinite solutions because anything coterminal to those, well, those are gonna be more answers. But we have to be super careful to the domain. The problem said that we only wanted to get answers from zero to two pi. So based on that, the one and only one answer you should have put in for this problem is pi over six. All right, moving on to part B, we were asked to do a little bit of manipulation, a little bit of, um, you know, reducing or simplification with two functions, J and K, J being a logarithmic function and K being some weird trigonomic function. All right, let's start off with part one here or part I. They want us to rewrite J as a single logarithm with base two. So we should have log base two and then something inside of that log. All right, this is actually a really easy one. I thought they would have made this one a little bit harder, but they certainly did not. The first thing I'm gonna do is move the three right here, and I'm gonna make that an exponent. So I'm gonna move that up here on the two. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Then we know that two cubed is eight, so might as well just turn that into an eight. That's pretty simple math there. And then we're gonna use one of our log properties, that the addition of two logs with the same base can be brought together with multiplication. So that makes our final answer log base two of eight X. Nice and simple. There's our final answer where we just have log base two and then an expression inside of that log and that expression of, of course, eight X. Pretty simple problem, not overly difficult. Now let's go back and let's now talk about K. They now want us to rewrite K as an expression in which tangent of X appears exactly once and literally no other trig functions in the problem. So we know we're gonna be good when we have a tangent of X and no other trig functions. All right, this is actually kind of a tricky one, so let's pay attention. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change cosecant squared minus one to 
cotangent squared. Now, what allowed me to do that? That's one of the Pythagorean theorems or the Pythagorean identities that you should know. One plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. So if I simply subtract this one over to the other side over there, I know that cosecant squared of x minus one is cotangent squared. Then I'm gonna use the reciprocal identity to say, hey, cotangent squared of x is one over tangent squared of x. We know that cotangent is one over tangent, therefore cotangent squared is one over tangent squared. That's one of those reciprocal identities. Then what I could do is I could do a little bit of reducing, right? This tangent is gonna reduce with one of these tangents because tangent squared is tangent x times tangent x. So one of those tangents is gonna cancel and that's gonna leave behind just a one over tangent. And then we can multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one over tangent is tangent. So we get six times tangent for our final answer there. Now I gotta be honest, there's a couple other ways you could use some of the trig identities to get the same answer. And as long as you showed all of your work and you finalize or you get a final answer of six times tangent of x, totally fine. But hopefully you see what I did there. This tangent cancels with one of these, leaving behind one over tangent. And then instead of, you know, the double fractions, I hate double fractions, so I'm gonna take six. Instead of mul instead of dividing, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal, which is tangent of x over one. And that's what got me that final answer of six times tangent of x. Not too bad. All right, let's move on to part C, probably the hardest problem on the free response section. We are asked to solve for where function M has output values of zero. So we're gonna find all input values in the domain of M that yield an output value of zero. This is a tough one. It involves a kind of pretty cool strategy that I really hope you learned. And if you didn't, then you unfortunately probably got this one wrong. So first off, let's set it up. We wanna figure out where does e to the two x minus e to the x minus 12 equals zero. Now here is the cool strategy that allows us to be a pretty simple problem. I'm going to remove the e from the problem by allowing m to equal e to the x. So if I allow m to equal e to the x, this e to the x is going to turn into an m, this e to the x is going to turn into an m, and that's going to give us m squared minus m minus 12. So now there's no more exponential part to this problem, which makes it pretty much simple. It's just a quadratic at this point. And how do you solve a quadratic? You factor. So we could factor this to m plus three times m minus four. Then we could use the zero product property to get that m plus three equals zero or m minus four equals zero. Those are both really easy to solve. I'm gonna subtract three and get m equals three, add four to get m equals four. But I'm not done yet because now what I have to do is bring the e to the x back. So I'm now gonna change these m's back to e to the x's and that gives me e to the x equals negative three and e to the x equals four. And now I have to solve those. And how do I solve those? Well, I'm gonna turn those exponential equations into logarithmic equations. And I know that x equals the natural log of negative three and x equals the natural log of four. So hopefully you understand that, and that's just basically turning an exponential equation into a logarithmic equation. The base is e, and we all know that the base of a natural log is e down there. The inside is the negative three, and logs equal the exponent, so I equal x, that's allowing me to solve for x. Same thing over here, the natural log has a base of e, the four goes inside, and we equal the exponent of x. But there's one more part left to this problem, you're never allowed to have negatives inside of logs. That's undefined. They don't work. You can't have a negative in a log. It's not in the domain. So this answer of natural log of negative three is not an answer. It doesn't work. It's not in the domain. So the only answer for X is the natural log of four. Final answer right there. Now, I gotta be honest, that's a tough one because if you didn't know that strategy of using this m, you don't have to use an m by the way, you can use any variable you want, but using m equals e to the x to kind of take the exponential out of it, turn it into a quadratic, factor, separate it, and then put the exponential back, then unfortunately you might have got it wrong, but hopefully you got it right, it was, what, was worth two points. All right, that's it for the fourth free response question. Hopefully you guys all nailed it. And if you did it, well, you know what? I'm sure you still did really good in the multiple choice. That couple points lost on F4Qs aren't gonna kill you. All right, best of luck. See everybody later.